I'm just grateful to the Lord to have been filled with his spirit. I think sometimes we just kind of take it for granted and act like it's a secondary thing. Church is the most important thing, but actually being filled with the spirit of God, that's where our power comes from. And so I'm just grateful to God today for having been filled with the Holy Ghost and for him putting up with me. Amen. Till I caught a hold to really want to be saved. Amen. If you will open your Bibles. Can you all hear me? All right. I can hear me. But I can hear me without a microphone. All right. In the book of Proverbs, we have a couple of scriptures. In the book of Proverbs, chapter number uh, 23, I believe it is. Proverbs. Where am I preaching from? 29? 32? 23? 13? No, that's not right. Um, that's why I'm not getting... I'm in Psalms. I'm like, this is not looking right. <laughs> well, that would be why. All right. Now it's looking right. Yes. Proverbs 23. See, when, you, when you're in the right place, the numbers and the words, they match up. Amen. Proverbs 23 and starting at verse number 29. Twenty-nine starts with some questions. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look now, look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea or he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me Thou shalt say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. We'll stop right there. I know what this is talking about as far as the condition that a lot of people find themselves in when they when they drink, especially to excess. And I know that we live in a culture today, at least in this country, where alcohol and drug abuse is perceived as a, a really cool thing. Kids, especially on college campuses, are looking for ways to get high. They experiment. I, I remember when I was in college, there was a kid down the hall from me in the dorm who would smoke anything. He smoked scotch tape. He smoked masking tape. He cut fibers off the carpet and smoked carpet. Anything trying to get high. And everybody thought it was kind of cool. He made it he made it through one turn and then had to go home. Just couldn't stick with the lessons because he was too busy trying to get high. Sometimes you walk by his room, he'd be standing on his head with something hanging out of his mouth because he's trying some new way to get high. He was, amen. It, it seems strange to us, but 
you know, you go to school, you go to these campuses at the major universities, and a lot of these kids are experimenting with drugs and alcohol. On one campus, they made it illegal for the students to have alcohol, period, on campus. So they started using water. You can get high drinking water. I know y'all think I'm making that up, but you can. You can drink enough water fast enough that it dilutes the, the salt in your brain and it makes you high. We've had kids that not drown, but died from a lack of salt in their brain, from drinking too much water too quick, and their body couldn't process it fast enough, and it killed them. Anything looking to get high. We, on television, we see where they talk about partying, everything in excess, especially on the music channels. The times I have seen it, it looks like everything is just over the top. Everything is over the edge. And I know that a lot of times these programs are designed in excess to get your attention. But, you know, it starts off that way. But then people start to try and imitate what they see yeah. on television. They think that stuff is cute. So they do it too. So he says here, he's, he starts off, Solomon starts off by asking a few questions about those that are having problems in their life. And I just want to tell you that my subject this morning is pleasure seeking. Pleasure seeking. We have folks that are always looking for some pleasure. Uh -oh. Who have woe? Who have sorrow? Who's the person that's got trouble in their life? Those that are tarrying long at the wine. Now, this is what he says, but I want to take this and, and kind of use the Bible to define it slightly different. The Bible says, wine maketh glad the hearts of men. So we're talking about those things that make us happy, those things that make us glad. Amen. I don't want to just get stuck on the wine because somebody will walk out and say, well, he didn't say nothing about crack, so... They're going to go ahead and try to get high on some crack. No, I'm talking about those things that make us happy, those things that give us joy, the things that give us pleasure. Who is it that has trouble? Who is it that's always got problems or wounds? Who is it that seems like everything is going wrong in their life? Well, it's those that are always seeking some kind of pleasure. I'll say this, you may not believe it, but it's truth. The human experience is not all about joy. It is problems that make us better people. You look at society right now. Look at the way people are conducting themselves. The reason why is because we have so much. You can walk down the street right now, and most of the folks won't even speak to you. They don't have to. But there was a time when everybody needed to lean on everybody else. You couldn't move something in your yard. You had a good relationship with your neighbors. They would help you move it. People shared their tools. They shared their, their workmanship. They shared themselves with their neighbors. They shared themselves with their community. We don't do that no more. We go in the grocery store. We don't speak to nobody. We don't smile. We don't care. We kind of carry the attitude of, I don't know them, and I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason why is because we don't need them. But when we have a need in our life, then all of a sudden we become friendly people. It is the adversity that makes us better people. There's times when... We are close to people that we have a connection to some kind of way. You know, you go over to another country where nobody speaks the language that you speak, and then you run across somebody. Now, we're from Michigan. You run across somebody from California. Well, you'll strike up a conversation with them and talk for a while because you got something in common with each other. 
I'm a stranger here. At least we speak the same language. We know the same culture. We know similar things so we can sit down and have a chat. But if I ran into someone from California in Michigan, I don't care. All right. So y'all don't. Maybe I'll change up a little bit here, see if we can go another way with this. It is those who are seeking joy all the time that have problems. That's my biggest hang-up with drugs itself. You're seeking to, to feel good all the time. But that's not life. Life comes with problems. Saved people have problems. Unsaved people have problems. Rich people have problems. Poor people have problems. Homeless people have problems. People have problems. And it's a, it's wrong when we always seek a way out of the problem instead of seeking our way through the problem. You can't numb it long enough for it to go away. Soon as you get down off of your high, problems are still there. So you go out and you look, and he says it like this. Those that tarry long at the wine, or those that seek mixed wine. And that's not just having fun, but different kinds of fun. You know, there, it is possible to enjoy something. But after a while, you get tired of it. Now, I do something that really, that kind of vexes my wife. I'll eat the same thing over and over again. I can get up every day and eat a bologna sandwich and some Fritos. She will get so upset about it, she won't buy no more Fritos for a while. She, she don't like to see me eating the same thing over and over. It's good to me. I can remember when McDonald's first came out with the McChicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. Every day for a year and a half, every single day, except Saturday and Sunday, I had me a McChicken sandwich and some french fries. Yeah, yeah. Didn't bother me at all. I hear people say things, and, and I'm not against it, and I'm not saying it's wrong. But I hear people say, I can't eat the same thing every day. Well, we just had meatloaf two days ago. How about some spaghetti? Because they, they, I don't want the same thing. Well, you ain't hungry enough. You get hungry enough, you eat the same thing every day. But I'm not saying it's wrong to have a little extra either. If you can have some variety, amen. I don't have to. That don't mean I'm more saved or anything like that. That just That's my personality. I can deal with it. Amen. I can wear a white shirt every day. Amen. It don't bother me at all. My wife ready to go through the closet and throw every white shirt away that I own. Because she tired of seeing it. Are y'all getting what I'm talking about? Some people can't just be happy with a little of one thing. They got to mix it up with some other stuff too. I'm seeking some pleasure. I'm seeking something that makes me feel good. But after a while, that just don't make me feel good anymore. Let me try some of this or let me try some of that. Because... I'm tired of just the same old thing over and over and over again. But there's a trap in that. There is, there is something very wrong with always needing something different to make you happy. Amen. Those that's married, y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. <laughs> Brother up, on, brother, brother up here shook his head. Yeah, he ain't even married. He knows. I know the, I know the married people know. I'm tired of my wife. I'm tired of my husband. I'm looking for something different. And then we'll come back and use that as an excuse. I was just looking for a little variety. That's not a reason to do wrong. Well, they would do some things that you wouldn't. That's not a reason to do wrong. Come on. See, y'all need to say amen on that. Even if you don't agree with it, 
it's still true. God saves us. God brings us in from a life of excess and abuse. Many people have a testimony that God saved them from drug abuse. God saved them from alcohol abuse. God saved them from womanizing or manizing. I, yes, I know I made that word up. But women chasing men now. We used to call them men womanizers. He's always chasing behind men. But they got women doing the same thing. Hey Amen. Yesterday I was at Walmart and I felt I felt I felt kind of molested the way this woman was talking to me. I hurry up and got up out of there. And it's not because I was interested. She was making me uncomfortable. Well now, that's the way I'm sure women used to feel all the time when men was hitting on them. But it's, it's not just a one-way street no more. Hey Amen. Did she tell my business in Sunday school? Oh. Uh, I talked with her after church. God saves us from all different types of addiction. Some people addicted to pornography. Addicted to chasing different people, men and women, all kinds of pleasures. Don't it don't have to be just one, maybe two or three people at the same time. Hey man, we got kids in here and I'm trying to make it at least PG. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right. We give them fancy names and all that to make it sound pretty, but it's still the same thing, pretty or ugly. It's still the same act. And it's wrong. God saves us from that. The problem is, is that when we come to church, all too often we bring that same need for excess in our life, even when we say, I can't just have one television, I got to have five. I can't just have five televisions, I got to have one in every room and one in my bathroom too. I can't just have a little bit. I got to go shopping until my closet is overflowing. Ooh. I, I'm, I'm, I'm heading up the right street now. Everybody done got quiet. I cannot just have a pair of shoes. I got to have 40 pairs of shoes. Look, I can change my shoes every single day for a month and not wear the same pair of shoes. Amen. I was with my nine-year-old granddaughter this morning. We was talking about some shoes. She said, well, you know, when I, I need to have shoes that, that match my outfits. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Like, what? Just get, a, just get a pair of shoes. You know, for me, a black pair and a brown pair. Maybe, maybe a quarter than pair. Three is the most you need to have. And some work boots so you can get out in the yard and, and then some tennis shoes. Some tennis shoes for walking, some tennis shoes for playing ball. Right, and then a pair that I wear just around the house. Amen. But when I go out, when I go out, to dinner with my wife and I got my casual clothes on, I need a different pair of tennis shoes. That's my casual tennis shoes for people to look at me. They my look at me tennis shoes that I can tuck the, the, the ankles of my pants down and shove them down inside my shoes because I paid $300 for them shoes. I want people to see my shoes. Oh, yeah, men done got excessive, too. We, we look at the sisters. Oh, they got to have so much. Men do the same thing. My wife was just looking at a television show about hunting for some house, and it was the man. He said, I got to have a special closet for all my shoes. He had probably 150 pairs. What do you do with that many shoes? That was crazy. He needed a 10 by 10 room just to put all his tennis shoes in. 
Excess, excess, excess. We can't just be satisfied with a little. We get wrapped up in politics, always arguing with somebody about what the government is doing and what the politicians are doing and what the senators are doing and the congressmen and, and how they're doing us wrong. And, oh, we need to do something about it. Just excess. You can get all riled up about it if you want to. You ain't changing them people. Some of us get wrapped up in sports. We know more about the basketball and football and soccer and high lie and golf. We know more about them than we do about Jesus. We struggle with moderation. We struggle with keeping things in balance because when we got saved, that was the kind of life that we had. And I'm going to tell you, television is something, and I'm, I, I, I'm telling I'm saying at least right now, I'm not saying television is a sin. What you look at on it might be. But television ain't a sin. I'm not throwing my TV out. I still got one. I know that I've been talking about it here lately, but I've been seeing things change so much now on TV. It's like, this is some crazy stuff. I don't get it anymore. I, I, I was looking at a program the other day. I said, I don't even understand what's going on. My daughter walked in the room and she said, what you looking at? I said, I have no idea. I don't know what these people are doing. I don't understand what they're even talking about. And it's not because I'm old. Well, maybe it is. All right. Thank you, sister. It just, it's just crazy now, the stuff that they talk about and what they're putting on television. Things that people used to be shamed to say to their neighbors or to their friends. They get on television and talk about it now. Get up there and grin and act like it's something that they should be proud of. Just say, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, and I did it five times. Like, wow, why would you say that? Why would you say that you've been with your wife and your mother-in-law? Why would you get on television and say that? Amen. Amen. We look at that kind of stuff, and it keeps our mind prepped for excess in things. I can't be satisfied with just the latest watch. I got to have what's coming over the horizon. I'm already starting to plan. I got an old watch. This thing, people think it's new. This is an old watch. It's not even a watch. It's just a music player that looks like a watch. Somebody saw it in a restaurant. They said, you getting the newest Apple Watch when it comes out? I said, I ain't studying the Apple Watch. I ain't got no money for it. I'm not spending no $300 on a watch. No. No, I'm not going to. I don't have to have the latest. The world tries to convince us that we have to have the latest in everything. Yeah. I can't just have this year's model. I've got to have next year's model, too. Yeah. I'll spend extra money just to make sure I'm one of the first to have it. I know a man right now that spent $5,000 on a television so he could be one of the first to have that kind of television. You can buy him now for less than $100, but he spent $5,000 for that television. That's a lot of money. You know, I could get me a decent truck for that kind of money. I wouldn't be able to live with my wife having a truck, but I could get one for $5,000. Oh, yeah, that's, that's real good. That's a lot of money just for a TV, but you know what? He had to have the latest. If we're not careful, we will be pleasure-seeking our whole lives and never happy with God because I got problems in my life. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close here. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 32, he says this, But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction, partly while, or partly whilst ye were a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were so used. He's talking about the fact that we can look back over all the problems in our life. How I got over all of that. We sing the song, How I Got Over. You know, Aretha Franklin made that song real popular. How I Got Over. I look back and wonder how I made it over. You can't sing how I made it over if you ain't ever getting over something. 
Matter of fact, in the book of Psalms, it says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. You got to go through some things. Life is not always just fun. Sometimes you got some dreary day. Sometimes you've got some problems in your life. That doesn't mean that God has deserted you. It doesn't mean that I ought to turn around now and go back out and seek those things that used to numb all my pain. No. Problems make me a better person. If you see somebody that's rich and has always been rich, that's somebody that's trouble. But you see somebody that's rich and was poor most of their life, that's somebody that's kind of got their act together. I remember reading about a movie star that was married and had been for many, many years. And someone asked him, how is it? Because you're a good-looking man. He was a, a good-looking man. How is it that you can be faithful to your wife with all these women chasing after you? He was very famous. He said, because I didn't get famous until I was grown. I was married and settled. I'm not looking for nothing else. I do what I like. That's acting. And then I go home, and I'm a husband and a father. That's all I'm looking for. But the ones, you look at these child stars that, that was raised up acting, and folks running behind them and chasing them and asking them for the autograph and all that. Them's the ones you see on the news all the time. In trouble again. Drunk driving again. Driving without a license again. Getting caught with drugs again. Those are the ones that have all kind of problems because they was raised with excess. Never having somebody tell them, don't do that. Because if they do, you fired. Get me somebody else that will come in and tell me it's okay. Well, God doesn't work that way. God will tell you, don't do that. And I don't care how bad you want it, the answer still no. Come on. I know that not only do, does television push us in the direction of excess, so do preachers. Preachers will tell you, you've got to have this and you've got to have that. You've got to have the other thing. Well, let me just say this. You've got to have what God gives you. There, having food and raiment, there would be content. If God gives you food and clothes, you ought to be happy. I, yeah, I know that's a lackluster, half-hearted amen and, and, and the clapping. I'm sure they didn't even hear it in this microphone. You know why? Because we don't want to have to suffer through anything. But if we're going to be saved, we can't do like what he's talking about in Proverbs. Consider not the wine. Quit looking at those things that always make you happy. Amen. Consider not, it said, he said, when it moves itself in the cup, you know, it just looking good to me. They put it on display, and it's just spinning around and it's sparkling. When you're walking through the mall and you stop and it's caught your eye, that's what they want. They want you looking at all that stuff. They want you coming back and trying to figure out, how can I skip my mortgage payment to make sure that I get this watch or I get this ring or I get these earrings or I get this necklace or I get this new pair of shoes. How, maybe I can just go and, 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 and kind of... Beg them and tell them I ain't got the money because my lecture's getting ready to get cut off. But I got to have it. He said, quit looking at it when it's looking pretty in the cup. Because if you keep looking at it, it's going to make you want it. If you don't have the way to get it, leave it alone. You don't have the money for it, walk away from it. Quit looking at it and lusting after it. Quit looking and imagining how good it's going to look on you. It might look good on you, but you don't look good with a good looking watch. Living under a bridge. I don't care. I've never seen nobody up underneath a bridge with a good looking suit on. You keep on walking around and living like that, and after a while, your best look bad. We need to stop chasing behind stuff just because it looked good to us. Oh, it's just bubbling and sparkling, and ooh, I can remember how it used to feel. And let me do it again. Amen. Keep on doing that, and after a while, we start saying, you know what? God's not enough. I'm tired of the problems in my life. I'm going back out in the streets and having me some fun. 
Oh yes, many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're going to have some trouble. You're going to have some dark times. Don't let nobody fool you and make you think it's all joy, 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 joy. You know, some folks get mad at me. Well, how come you ain't trying to get the saints up shouting? I've had people ask me that. Well, that's not my job. My job is to preach the word. Amen, Sister Ashley? Amen. Preach the word. That's, that's my job. Preach the word. God didn't, God didn't hire me to be no cheerleader. God didn't hire me to try to make folks shout. God hired me to feed his sheep. That's all. If you want to shout, shout. I don't care. I'm not trying to stop nobody from enjoying the Lord. But that's not reality to always want to shout. It's not reality to always look for something good. It's not real. It's, it's fake when everything has to always be fun, fun, fun. Sometimes it's just hard. But you keep on pushing through it. And after a while, you kind of established, you're you settled, you're, you, you kind of got a good head on your shoulders because you know it, it's not always going to be fun. I can deal with the problems because we got problems sometimes. And my wife used to fuss at me about that. She don't fuss too much no more because she's been going through some things. She would say, you act like you don't care. We having problems and you act like you don't care. I said, oh, I care, but I'm not losing sleep over it. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to keep on eating. That's it. I've had some rough problems, some things that made me wonder, what is it all about? But I didn't let that stop me from eating. I didn't let it stop me from going on to work. You know, some folks, as soon as trouble hits, and I don't understand why they cut off my electric, and I know I'm doing the right thing, I'm quitting my job. Well, you can't do that. Hey, man, now my wife, she had problems, and she going to bed too. Because after a while, you figure out, that's just the way it is. And I'm not going to sit around worrying all the time about it because many are the afflictions of the righteous. I'm not always seeking fun because I know there's got to be some times where there is no fun. Amen. Let's not be pleasure seekers. Let's enjoy pleasure when we have it, but be seekers of God. Seekers of truth, seekers of righteousness, seekers of other people's welfare. No amens on that, huh? All right. It's true. We need to be worried about one another. I'm going to leave you with one scripture, one last scripture. Rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. Sometimes things are okay in your life, but you see your brother or sister weeping. Sometimes you got to cry with them. That night, I don't mean, I don't, I don't mean the baby. The babies cry all the time. We be crying all the time. Amen. So I ain't, I'm not gonna cry with him, but I'm hurt when the saints are hurt. I am genuinely. I'm not just saying that. When I see God's people going through some problems and I can't fix it, it hurts me. But I know they'll make it if they just keep on plugging away at it. They'll make it. Amen? Amen. We've got to be the same way. Encouraging. Not just fun. Is there anyone here today that stands in need of prayer? And I know we just give an altar call, but sometimes we just need prayer too. Amen. This is your time. We mix prayer and altar call. Amen. All right then, one o'clock's coming up. Stand on your feet.